Yo, what's up everybody? So in the last video on the Type R, we got it running, we got it driving. Um, you're gonna see that I washed it, I cleaned it. Uh, I gotta wash it again because it still has some fingerprints on it or whatever. Um, and it also had like a starting, like it, like a ground issue is what it seemed like. So I cleaned the battery ground. I found out that the valve cover ground was in the wrong spot. Um, and I still have to clean the transmission ground on the bottom. So I'm about to clean the transmission ground now, move the valve cover ground, and then try and start it. Hopefully the ground issue that is what I think it is, you know, because if not, if it's not those three, then it's the starter itself. But um, that's what we're doing right now. And then hopefully I can get it washed up, all cleaned up nice with some like real good degreaser to get all the oil and stuff off it from pushing it uh, so much. And we'll get this car back to uh, the owner. All right, so I'm gonna do this one first because it's easy. Make that look a little bit nicer. Alright, now I'm going to clean this up, make this look a little bit nicer now, because it looks like doo-doo. Alright, I need both my hands to keep this straight. Alright, it's tight, and that looks way more presentable to me. Okay, and it looks good now. So that's back to how it should be OEM. Now we got one more ground to take care of. That guy way in there. You're not going to be able to see it, but it's, it's way in there. So this ground is the transmission ground. And I think this was what was given my starter issue. Is like the starter was like... Like if it almost like if it was the car was dead, but it was still cranking. Like it'll do it for just a second. It'll be like... But um... Yeah, I think this is the issue, and uh, you guys remember that red battery cable wire? Yeah, well, I had to repurpose it. At least it, at least it looks decent. But I'm gonna throw this in and see if it took care of the issue. I already cleaned up the rest of my grounds. Um, if not, then you just gotta replace the starter. Background right there is a little bit of a pain to get, but I got it. I got it all cleaned up down to the bare metal underneath it. And that one should be grounding really good right now. Oops. So, the noise, I thought it was the bumper support, and it is. Well, the bumper support has got to get taken off and probably replaced and then the, the styrofoam is probably real hard too so just got to get taped up against it so i just want to show you guys my grounds real quick Every time it beeps, that means the ground is good. So all three of my grounds are good, so I'm, I'm pointing towards that starter. Okay guys, so the uh, Type R, when it warmed up, it would surge down. Like it'll, the idle will go down to like 500 RPM, and then it will come back up. So. I started reading the fuel trims. I got my scanner right there. And the fuel trims were real high. They were almost 40%. Um, so I started diagnosing things, you know, trying to find out where the air leak is at, if it does have an air leak. And all my vacuum lines are all good. Everything's good there. And uh, I know you guys can see the idle air control off. Well, I pulled the intake tube off and felt the hole for the idle air control and it was leaking like really bad so it was sucking way more air than it should have been 
and then I pulled the idle air control off seeing that it was a little dirty so I cleaned it or whatever and um, then I went to actuate I have a power probe right there and uh, that lets me turn things on and off um, without it being connected and it didn't even budge like it did not move at all so the idle air control valve is stuck and um, that's my air leak right there so I, still got, I gotta get in touch with the owner see if he wants me to leave it on and he take it and replace it or if he wants me to replace it here it's like a $200 part minus um, taxes and stuff like that so it's still gonna be more than 200 bucks but that seems to be the problem right there. It, when I activate it, it doesn't even budge. Not even a little bit. All right, well, you can see the power probe is clean. You see it's white. Uh, well, the power probe. The idle air control valve. And I don't know if you can see that. See, it's like barely moving. Sometimes it doesn't even move when I hit the power button. So when it's cold, it's at zero. I'm wondering if it's the oxygen sensor. I'm following the steps right now to find out if it's the oxygen sensor just before I settle on the idle air control valve. Because I think it's the idle air control, but I'm going to check this... Um, to make sure the oxygen sensor isn't bad first. It's an open loop, so it's not really gonna read the fuel trims right now. So you're supposed to hold it at 3,000 RPM until the fan comes on. And if the oxygen sensor reads less than 0.3, or point, and less than 0.3 or 0 0.03 and more than 0 0.06, then it's bad. I gotta get my numbers correct. Look, there's point zero. Yeah, so it's point zero three. If it's less than point zero three, it's bad. And if it's more than point zero six, it's bad. All right, so I got it down back at idle. The um, fan came on and everything. And the book said if it stays less than point three, and it says point zero. So it's long gone. This oxygen sensor. It's time to replace it. Um, I'm gonna swap out the oxygen sensor and that should take care of all the issues here So upon further diagnosis, I found out it was the oxygen sensor bank one sensor one um, I got one waiting for me at Napa. It's a dental one. I'm gonna go grab it throw it in and Watch it fix all the problems All right, so I got the oxygen sensor bank one sensor one. There we go about to throw this thing in and then we're gonna look at that boy again over there, the scanner. All right, I got my seven eights, my anti the oxygen sensor, my moving blanket. I'm about to go knock this out now. This thing shouldn't be that difficult. The plug is right there. Uh, let's turn the light on. There it is. Just gotta unplug it, loosen it. Everything's hot, so I'm not gonna do it while I'm recording. I'm just showing y'all where it's at. So I unplugged the oxygen sensor and you can see that it's kind of green on the one corner. See the bottom right corner is kind of green. So um, I was going to depin the socket anyway or the plug anyway so that I can put a wrench around it because I can't get anything else. And well, it's corroded. That's why it's not working. So. I'm just going to go ahead and replace it. And it should solve all our problems. I'm also going to clean that, if not replace that guy right there. So I do have a harness laying around. It's from a J-Series, and it should you know, work right on there. I'll have to resolder it and stuff, but it'll be fine. All right, got that guy out. The old double wrench trick worked. Like I said, it was... It was corroded on the one terminal. You can see it's all 
like red the wire so glad we are in here a new guy right here I'm about to any seize it up and then before I plug him in I gotta fix that guy right there that one terminal in the corner but I'm, I don't know I'm gonna check them all out make sure they're all good and if any of them are bad I'm gonna replace them what are you doing zoom yummy any seize a little excessive but it'll be fine yeah so you can see look at the bottom two the bottom two look horrendous top two is still you know the one on the left could be clean but the other one is shiny still the bottom two have corrosion so i'm gonna see if i don't replace all four just to make sure they're all new but um yeah this was definitely our problem man i'm glad i figured it out all right i got a spare everybody looks good inside all right i'm gonna use these four wires i'm not using the plug i'm gonna use the plug that's on there unless i do use this one i don't know um i might just solder them one by one so they're they're in the correct place and just use this whole thing so i don't have to take it apart i could just solder this straight to that so here's the replacement all right, so here the, the pins on the right are the oxygen sensor. You see how corroded they are? And then this is the plug for the um, engine side, or the harness, engine harness side. These are all the, the pins. So I replaced it with a um, another one that I had here. And um, it should be good now. All right, now we're reading. Yes. So I'm gonna let it warm up and everything and see if it does that weird idle surge that it was doing. It's cold right now. So yeah, let's find out. Fuel trims are at 0% right now though because it's of course an open loop. The open loop when it says CL it's in closed loop I'll be back with you guys well I guess that's it with the type R I threw the tags back on it everything is good it's running fine it's not idle surging anymore um, it's ready for him to come pick it up I already told him uh, he's gonna try and come tomorrow and uh, he's gonna drive it home uh, but I only got one final thing left to do and that's give it one more wash, which I'm gonna have you guys for. And after that, you're gonna see, um, you know, the owner's reaction and him driving it away tomorrow. So, see you on the next clip. I don't think I showed you guys that I installed this. It's a Z-Spec Design wiper plug delete. Yep. Real easy to install. Went right on. Because the other one he had had a hole in it. And it looked crazy. But this one's real flush and looks great. Sorry for the nighttime shot, but this is like all sun almost throughout the day entirely until the night goes down. So washing cars back here is a pain. Uh, so I'll wait until the nighttime. I'm about to wash it now though. On that beat, going crazy.
I must say it came out pretty amazing. It's so clean. Cleaned out all the jams. I'm not gonna open them, but I cleaned them all out. Welcome to the back so we can see the back. All clean. Oh, well, got this set in here backwards so that when he comes tomorrow, just open up the garage and boom, it's yelling at him in his face. I know you're gonna see this, but tomorrow you're not gonna see this, so you'll have the car by the time you see this video, ain't? See y'all tomorrow morning. So today's the day, guys. Um, the Type R is leaving. It's right here in front of me. He should be here with, I don't know, with, within the next hour or two to come pick up the car. I washed it. I cleaned the inside. I wiped down the dash and everything all over again. This thing's ready for him to go. It's even facing out to just drive out. All right, so he should be pulling up any minute now. Um, I'm going to set up so we can get his live reaction. Hopefully he doesn't see the camera, but it's going to be like here out, clear in the open. Be here soon. This is where it all happened at, right here. This is everything where it's happening. Nice. This is actually a great workspace. Yeah. I can't tell that it's like it, it's like this.
Well, it was already like that. It was yeah, already yeah. Wearing, wearing down from when it was on before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, wore, it will wear down. Yeah, because of the heat. But if you want to take care of it immediately, the slim panel, like, it'll be fucking as far as this, like, right here. Here's what happened. My header rotted out. Yeah. And I was about to go buy a header. And my brother on rough was like, I got a header that scored this one for 1.5, yeah, 1.6, yeah. I meant to say. And he says it'll bolt right on there. Right. So I was like, alright. When I put it on there though, so this is not a header for a type R, this is a head for a Civic. Civic type R? Civic type R. 16 or something? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, they have the same ports and, and like you can take this intake and bolt it on that. Right, shit. so because it's header, but I just threw it on there and it worked and I was like, you know, fuck it, you know. But that's exactly why that is not a type R header. But it works. Yeah, it does work. It does work. Alright. Alright, man. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be fine. Yeah, it is going to be fine. Yeah. I want to know about this trip back. How much money? Oh, yeah. Had. Yo, that floor, man. Be careful how hard you get on it because that does flex. What does? That floor right there. So now why is Put that pressure cool? on it. Oh, I, I never even saw that yeah, back there. Dude. Yeah, man. That shit is bad. You bro. see this here? Yeah. This I knew about all these years. Mm -hmm. But how about I've never seen that? Yeah, bro. That shit is really bad. Holy if you push on the push on the floor right there. Yo. Yeah, see? Yeah. Yo, I it's solid over here though. Yeah, yeah. You can still and look, sure you can still get on it. It's mounted here, right? So I mean this is some good. You'll be fine, man. I mean, I mean, it's solid there. Yeah, you'll be, be like fine. It's not like it's gonna push through the floor, but right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fucking, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't what? Like turn it all away and try to ninety it. Oh. Like ninety the car. You know what I mean? But then again, this this right here, this right here will hold the the, the car solid. You know I mean, what I mean? I just so I just weary of that hole in the floor. Yeah. But I I didn't I thought you knew about that one. No. That was I the bigger about, one. I knew about that in the corner. To be honest with you, when I last they parked all this. Have a little to be honest with you, when I last parked this, that was not there. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that just happened over time. Yep. Like I said, all the corners are rusty. You can see that brown powder coming up. That corner is rusting. All the all the rust, all the corners of the cage are, are rusty. All right. So hopefully a body guy will be able to put some plates down or something. My my neighbor was telling me that to fix this, you can just cut a floor out of an Integra from the junkyard, and it's the same exact floor. Yeah. Like what I see, board. what I see, other R's do, like the trackable ones are like this. Mm -hmm. They just Put a metal plate, clean it, put a metal plate right over it. Mm, you know, it's like it's just a new sheet metal. Just a new sheet metal, you know. But whatever it takes. Yeah, man, I'm sure you'll get it squared away. It's easy to get to, which is nice. Right. My only thing is that's that's scary for me. To me, that's not scary. Yeah. To me, what's scary is this back over here. Uh, underneath here. Mm, yeah, you know that bar, that factory oh, do we, bar? Do we remove that piece that Yes, shit okay. yes. You know that factory bar that's on the bottom? Yeah. That's rotted on one side. That's what I'm saying. That under here, I know for sure there's some rotting that's happening, especially on this side. But who knows where the other side That's why I recommend that dry ice shit, man, because that'll peel all that shit right off. It's like sandblasting, but with ice. Okay. And you know, it doesn't damage anything. People use it on paint, like to clean up their paint, Oxida oxidation and shit. Uh -huh. So you clean it to the bare metal and then what? You, put, you undercoat it. Yeah. And some there's gotta be some rebuilding happening too. Well, if it's eating away like that, then yeah. yeah. But if it's just surface rust, you just peel it away, neutralize it, and then you paint on top of it. Gotcha. Body guys are no more than me for sure. I'm not a body man. Chubby can tell you more, but he's he hasn't been doing it professionally, but he went to school for that. Alright, that's still good. That's good. Just be careful pulling out of here. Nice and straight Watch all me. the way out. Yeah. Me your ear, your mirrors are fine, they fit in and out. goes.